and the Baltimore Orioles. It's the ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week. It's a hot, humid night in downtown Baltimore. Baseball weather. And a sellout crowd is gathering here at Camden Yards to watch the Orioles and the Red Sox in the American League East. The Red Sox down near the bottom. It's been a terrible year for them. The Yankees at the top, but they lost today in Baltimore for one of the few times lately has a chance to gain ground, and they need to take advantage of it. Five and a half out in the wild card race. The White Sox on the top of that division. The Orioles and the Mariners. Mariners also play tonight, by the way, are tied for second in that race. So either way, the Orioles need a win here tonight. Hello everyone, I'm John Miller along with Joe Morgan, your Sunday night telecasters. Welcome to our final telecast before the All-Star break. And we'll see a lot of All-Stars or should be All-Stars here tonight. The Red Sox with Vaughn and Canseco, the Orioles with Bonilla, Ripken, Alomar not in the lineup. Palmero, who probably should be in the All-Star game. We'll talk about all of that a little bit later on. Now, Scott Erickson goes for the Orioles tonight. Their pitching has been bad most of the year, better lately, particularly Erickson. He's been outstanding his last four starts, but Joe. Facing the Red Sox, a lot of sluggers in that lineup. Well, they have a lot of sluggers led by Mo Vaughn, who is the reigning MVP in the American League. But the guy that I like to watch hit most right now is Jose Canseco. I mean, he's putting a charge in some balls. This is Friday. This is a typical Jose Canseco home run. He blasts one to left field, and on Thursday, he hit one to straightaway center field. So he, Erickson has his work cut out for him. If he makes any mistakes, he'll pay for it. All right. Now, the Baltimore Orioles tonight will have to face Tom Gordon former Kansas City Royal he's replacing Eric Hansen for the Red Sox it's been a big disappointment although he is six and four and even without Alomar in that lineup tonight the, the Orioles have a, a lot of great offensive talent Joe well you're right they can handle good right handed pitching Gordon has to get his curveball over if he can throw strikes with his curveball he has a better chance but remember you have Palmero you have guys like that who can hit the ball out of the ballpark Brady Anderson who leads the league so he's uh, he's going to have his work cut out for him as well all right the Orioles and the Red Sox the Orioles in particular badly in need of a victory they will send Tom Gordon for the Red Sox and the Orioles will go with Scott Erickson we'll be right I promised you a demon drencher and you'll get a demon drencher even if we have to drive to Alaska Sorry, we're all out. Hey, a promise is a promise. Kelly Springfield tires are designed to go a long way, and we've got the warranties to prove it. Hi, we're heading home. So go. Quite a trip, huh, pal? Get every mile you can out of life. You've always made a great team. Together growing Sharing the rewards along the way. Park Avenue. For the comfort. For the luxury. For the quality. Congratulations. You've earned it. Buick Park Avenue. Pure performance. Zostrix Sports. New from Zostrix. The topical pain reliever doctors prescribe most. The purest capsaicin you can get. Zostrix Sports. Relieves joint pains, muscle aches. Don't play hurt. Zostrix Sports outperforms pain. To get the most out of this IndyCar, Patrick Racing put Scott Pruitt behind the wheel. They built a team that could get it in and out of the pits in the blink of an eye. And they chose a battery they can depend on to get it started. The Duralast battery from AutoZone. The same Duralast you can depend on to start your car. So don't settle for anything less. The Duralast battery. Power you can depend on. Wendy's crispy chicken nuggets are all white meat, and now you get five for only 99 cents. I see a lot of you getting them for your kids. Then I see eating their nuggets when they're not looking. Come on, buy your own. Get five Wendy's chicken nuggets, now just 99 cents every day. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Tonight from uh, beautiful Camden Yards in downtown Baltimore. John Miller, Joe Morgan here with you. The fourth game of this series between the Orioles and Red Sox. The Red Sox, the division champions just a year ago, and uh, they're still scoring a lot of runs and hitting a lot of home runs, but they're just not winning very often right now. And uh, the batting order tonight, a pretty strong looking lineup for manager Kevin Kennedy. Jeff Fry leads off at second base for the injured Will Cordero. John Valentin at shortstop. Mo Vaughn, last year's MVP. At first base, although he is in a home run drought right now, still has 24 for the year. Jose Canseco 
the designated hitter 26 home runs including a couple in this series Tim Naring kind of the forgotten man although he's hitting well over 320 Reggie Jefferson has been a, a part timer but lately has hit so well that they just got to get him in there every day he's hitting 379 Mike Stanley the former Yankee is the catcher Troy O'Leary is in right field and Lee Tinsley with them last year with the Phillies at the start of this year but now back with Boston he's in center field hitting ninth the Orioles have just taken the field and on the mound for Baltimore will be the veteran right hander Scott Erickson and his earned run average was almost a run per game higher than that four starts ago he's had three complete games in his last four starts and pitching much the way he did the last six weeks of last year when he ended the year in a winning streak well John he's been getting the ball down I've watched a couple of ball games that he's pitched lately he's been able to keep the ball down and as long as his sinker is working he can keep the ball in the ballpark the troubles he was having at the beginning of the season he was getting his sinker up and he basically throws just a sinker and a slider. And let's take a look at the defense. You know, Billy Ripken is replacing all-star Roberto Alomar, but he made a couple of great plays here the last couple of days, starting a couple of double plays and taking base hits away from Mo Vaughn. So he is playing very, very well. And there are the brothers Ripken. In case you're not familiar, that's Cal on the left. He's the older of the two. Gee, they, they look a lot alike. <laughs> You'd almost think they were related. They were the double play combination here for a number of years. And then uh, Bill Ripken was released. He went to Texas for a couple of years. Last year was in uh, the Cleveland organization and learned how to play shortstop. Spent most of the year in Buffalo. And then the Orioles signed him during the winter. And now he's a, a valuable fill. And he filled in beautifully in third base when B.J. Surhoff was down on the disabled list for a while. This series began on the 4th of July, and guess what? I saw Joe Morgan here. The Orioles almost blew an 8-2 to two ninth inning lead in that ball game. Boston uh, won 7-3 to three on Friday, and then yesterday afternoon, the Orioles prevailed 4-3, to three, despite losing Alomar and Bonilla in the first inning. Alomar to injury, Bonilla to ejection, and the young Rocky Coppinger, whose idol as a youth, Roger Clemens, opposed him yesterday, and he bested the Rocket. Here at Camden Yard. So now Jeff Fry, former Texas Ranger, leads it off. And Erickson throws him a fastball. Strike one, and we are underway. Temperatures got into the mid 90s in Baltimore today. Rather humid. Here's Kevin Kennedy. And Joe, what's he smiling about? The Red Sox. <laughs> I was going to ask the same thing, Joe. 14 games under 500. <laughs> Bill Ripken off to his left. Fry is at number one. Paul Merrill taking the throw. Maybe it's one of those laugh to keep from crying situations. Well, he wasn't smiling so much Wednesday where they had a, a team meeting at Yankee Stadium, a game that eventually uh, was called off because of uh, a threat of rain. And uh, they held a team meeting that lasted about two hours. And uh, Kennedy said that there were just a lot of things that were not sitting well with him. He wanted to bring a lot of things up. Mo Vaughn did a lot of talking. Jose Canseco did a lot of talking at the meeting. Here's John Ballington. And he takes a strike. Now, Ballington had 27 home runs last year and 102 battered in. But he says they're pitching him much tougher this year. It's almost like he can't sneak up on them any longer. He's also had some injuries this year, John. He has not been completely healthy the entire year. And he says, hey, no one wants to hear about my injuries because all they care about is what I'm doing statistically. So uh, he's not complaining, but he has played with a lot of injuries so far. One ball, one strike to count. That's a fair ball. Devereaux over to pick it up. Ballington's going to try for two, and he will make it there easily. Although Devereaux thought he apparently had a shot at it. Palmero backed up the throw. A double for Ballington, his 23rd double of the year. Well, this is what you want. If you're Erickson, you want the ball on the ground. This one finds a hole down the line. He gets out in front of it, actually way out in front, right over the bag, goes down into the left field line, and he gets a double out of it. We see Bonds, Valentin, but he's still, John, he can still hit over 20 home runs and still drive in over 80 runs, and that's still a good year for a shortstop. Now Mo Vaughn, and Big Mo, although he's gone 57 at bats without a home run, nonetheless has 24 homers and 73 RBIs among the league leaders in both categories. He takes ball one outside. He also, with a 344 average, is sixth in the league in that category. Tied for fifth in home runs. And the 73 RBIs also up, uh, among the, the top five or six in the league. Frank Thomas at the start of the day leading 
the major leagues with 85 RBIs. One on, one on. That one is hit a mile right field. It is gone, headed out and onto Utah Street. It bounces up against the warehouse above Bambino's pub, which is appropriate because Mo Vaughn just hit one with a Ruthian authority. His 25th home run of the year and his first in a while. He's got some torn ligaments on the middle finger of his right hand that he said have kept him from really hitting the ball with authority of late. Well, he said they're all pitching him inside now. They've been getting away with it. Where Erickson does not get away with this. You can see Hoyle sets up inside. It's a fastball in and Mo turns on it. And he basically hit that with his lower body. He really didn't drive it with his hands. He used his lower body to get the bat through there. Now Jose Canseco. And that was not just a home run by Vaughn, but a, a booming shot. There's the uh, there's the guy who caught that ball. If it bounced off the warehouse, hitting off Utah Street up against the warehouse, and this fellow, after having some refreshment, has himself a souvenir. Strike call to Canseco. Now Canseco, as Vaughn has just hit number 25, Canseco has 26 for the year, even though he has missed 14 games. He had 26 homers and only 272 at bats. is still making good pitches. He made a perfect pitch on Canseco the first pitch. He was actually through the ball where he wanted on Mo Vaughn. Vaughn just turned on it. The slider misses. Two and two the count. In the American League we've got the leading home run hitter in the game tonight. That's Baltimore's Brady Anderson with 29. Mark McGuire at number 28 against the Angels today out in Oakland. Albert Bell 27. Then Canseco and Vaughn of Boston. So three of the top five home run hitters in the league are in our game tonight. Two of them with the Red Sox. Full count now to Canseco. And Brady Anderson will be coming up second in the Orioles inning. And he may be getting a start in the All-Star game with Ken Griffey being injured. Broken back. Foul up the first base side. Well, Brady Anderson finished fourth in the battle thing, so you would think that he would get the start in center field plus he's leading the league in home runs he's had a great season so far and he's a logical choice I would think to replace Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, Mike Hargrove will make that determination and Hargrove has not stated publicly who he's going to uh, put out there as a starter Brady said he had not heard anything before the game tonight and remember he's also a center fielder that's the position that Griffey plays of course so Again, he's probably the logical choice. See, Canseco's done some damage in this series. Two nothing, Boston ahead already. One out in the first inning. And that is ball four to Canseco. One way or the other, who's going to get on base on that one, Joe? Yes. Either the walk or the hit by pitch. Well, you can see Erickson is trying to keep the ball in tight on Canseco. And he tried to do the same thing on Vaughn, but Vaughn saw it coming, turned on it, and hit the ball out of the ballpark. Well, in 105 innings this year now, Scott Erickson has only given up eight home runs, including the home run just hit by Vaughn. So he's not the most likely candidate for Moe to hit a tape measure shot against. This is daring, and that's a foul off his foot. Well, again, he throws a sinker, which gets you a lot of ground balls and keeps the ball out of the air, and he throws a slider. So those two pitches will usually keep you from hitting the ball in the air unless you hang the slider and one of your sinkers or he gets it up in the strike zone. Move on. 25 homers, 75 RBIs now for the year. We put him up in fourth place with Greg Vaughn, Milwaukee, who's having a great year. Right field, Bobby Bonilla. Basket catch. Back to first will go Canseco. That's the first time Bonilla has been in the outfield for four days, four games. He's fouled a ball off his foot, so he was not playing the outfield. But he has proven that he should be in the outfield because he hits a lot better when he plays defense than when he's just a DH. He hit a foul ball off his right foot. 
in Toronto batting left handed. Then the next day in his first at bat he had a foul ball off his left foot batting right handed. And uh, he didn't have any more feet. <laughs> so been de aging the last uh, few days. There's a swinging strike by Reggie Jefferson. Reggie Jefferson 379. Where have they been keeping this guy Joe? 379. He got nine homers, 32 batted in, in only 169 at bats. And in the last 10 games, look at that. Back to the bag at first, Kensenko. Kensenko stole a base yesterday when they were not paying attention to him. And he has not been stealing many this year. That's only two steals for him. Remember, this is the guy that was the only player in the history of Major League Baseball to hit 40 home runs and steal 40 bases in the same year. He said after that 40 40 year that he felt like he could do 50 50. And I remember talking to him. I said the toughest is not, thing to do is not going to be to hit the 50 home runs for you, but to continue to steal a lot of bases because he's such a big guy that then he ends up with a lot of injuries. So it's very difficult for him to steal a lot of bases year in and year out. Ball one to Reggie Jefferson. One ball, and two strikes. The Yankees were beaten today by Milwaukee four to one at Yankee Stadium and a former Oriole Ben McDonald pitched a beauty to win his ninth game for Milwaukee besting Kenny Rogers in that one. So the Orioles for the first time in uh, quite a few days with a chance to actually gain ground. Jefferson down on strikes. And the Red Sox are retired but Mo Vaughn has put the Sox ahead with a spectacular home run. Now Flash Gordon will be facing Polonia Brady Anderson and that man Cal Ripken. A rude central air conditioner is built so well, it might just last you till the next ice age. Heck, a rude air conditioner cools so well, it might even cause the next ice age. You can rely on rude. Special financing now available. To get out of rough, tall grass and weeds like this, you don't need one of these. You need one of these. The Weed Terminator. The Weed Terminator replacement head with serrated edge blades cuts through tall weeds and grass with ease. The Weed Terminator replacement head installs quickly and easily, and changing replacement blades is a snap. After all, there's a lot better things to be doing with your time. Available at finer home improvement centers and retailers worldwide. Presenting Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. A clear, clean gel that goes on smoothly with no white residue. For powerful all-day protection, Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN from Camden Yards out on Utah Street beneath the 19th century edifice, the old B&O warehouse. And they are roasting some peanuts, Joe, just the way they did when the Baltimore Orioles of the National League played here in the 1890s. Well, I tell you, I had some of those peanuts yesterday, and they're great. I saw you out there. Yeah. I you had a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to corner the market out there. The Orioles, 5.8 runs a game, fourth in the league, and this has been a very prolific offense, and uh, they're on a record pace for hitting home runs. Here's their batting order. It'll be Luis Polonia leading off with Alomar injured. Brady Anderson in center. Cal Ripken in short. Paul Merrill is at first base. Uh, Ripken, by the way, has been on a tear. It'll be Bonilla in right. Sirhoff at third. Devereaux the left fielder. Chris Hoyles the catcher. And Bill Ripken is at second base with Alomar out. So here we go. The veteran Polonia against the right-hander. Tom Gordon. It's interesting. Polonia was the man who lost his job when the Yankees brought Strawberry up last year. And of course Polonia ended up with the Atlanta Braves went to the World Series. And this is out of play. One ball one strike. And of course now Strawberry is back with the Yankees again. He played his first game back in New York today. Polonia has not hit well for the Orioles. Well you see he's not a typical leadoff man anyway because he does not walk very often. Polonia goes up to the hack. Yeah, he swings at almost everything. And if he hits 300, that's usually his on-base percentage. Tom Gordon, six and four, but look at that earned run average. Terrible. He has really struggled with Boston, and given up a lot more hits than innings pitches. In the past, been a pretty tough guy to hit with some control problems. 
This year, a lot of hits and control problems. And that's a base hit. The curveball. And Polonia whacks it into center field, and now the power comes up. The major's leading home run hitter striding to the plate in the person of Brady Anderson. Twenty nine home runs leading the majors 60 runs batted in and a 291 batting average. He also in addition to the home runs has 20 doubles and three triples only Edgar Martinez of the Mariners has more extra base hits total than Brady Anderson. And he also gets a lot of walks and steals bases plays an outstanding center field. Colonia with seven steals for the year back to the bag at first move on on the bag with him. Well Gordon is going to have to get the curveball lower. He threw a strike with the curveball to Colonia and he hit it in the center field to get ahead in the count he started in the strike zone and break it out. Fastball strike. On the count, Ken Kaiser is the home plate umpire tonight. Two nothing, Boston ahead as we play the last of the first. Cal Ripken is on deck. Tim Welke first base. Joe Brinkman at second. Daryl Cousins at third. As you can see, this is a veteran crew. Into left center. It falls in front of Jefferson. Colonia will stop at second. It's a base hit for Brady Anderson. And now Cal Ripken will come up with two men on and nobody out. John, I've been here since Thursday, and watching the outfield play here, it seems that these guys are not able to run balls down in the outfield here. And the turf falls up out here. It tells me that this is not a fast track. Now Jefferson tries to catch it. Now watch him tear up the turf right there. It tells me that maybe it's a little wet out there or whatever, because these guys are not running the balls down as I think they should be able to do. Cal Ripken will come up. Cal is having one of his best seasons at 289 average, 17 homers, 65 batted in. Cal has won two MVP awards, but he's had some good all round seasons with the bat in the past. And this year he was not doing anything at all with the bat the first nearly two months. But since May the 28th, as we showed you that note during the lineups, he has been on a concerted tear. Two on, nobody out. That's one missing ball one. Johnny hit a home run off Wakefield in his first at bat Thursday, and he has not had a base hit since. He's 0 for 10 since that time. So he, he even though he hit, he's swinging the bat well, he still has good statistics. He's in a mini slump. Plenty of speed on the base pass. Called a strike. Next one to the outside. Count one ball, one strike to Cal Ripken. There's Polonia at second base. And Brady Anderson alongside coach John Stearns. Good friend of yours. Yeah, bad dude. That's what they that's his nickname. Bad dude. Used to play with your mind. <laughs> yeah, John Stearns. Bad dude. <laughs> Former catcher at the Mets. Too long. Two and one to Cal Ripken. Rafael Palmero. The leading RBI man in the majors is on deck. Rick down in the background there, the hitting instructor. There's Bobby Bonilla down in the hole. Do up after Palmero. Two and one to Ripken. That's the changeup. He basically throws a fastball, curveball, and he's able to throw an occasional change. Now, if you're David Johnson, you're down two runs. Do you start the runners? No. I don't think you do because he has not retired anyone in this entire ball game. No outs, a line drive, and you're out of the inning, a triple play. High pop up. The infield fly rule in effect. Jeff Fry. So Ripken continues with that little offer that he's been accumulating since that home run. It's, it's weird you hit a home run and you've been swinging the bat great. All of a sudden you look up now you're all for 11. And Palmero has been struggling a little bit also but he broke out of his slump yesterday by hitting a home run. So he's like one for his last 18 now. So 
couple of the middle of the order is struggling a little bit right now, but even, and the Orioles are still winning. Palmero hit a second inning home run Tuesday in Toronto, a three-run shot, and did not get another hit until yesterday when he hit a home run. Two on, one out. A called strike. Palmero, 298, 22 homers. 77 RBI. You see only one hit in his last 18 at bats. His home run yesterday came against Roger Clemens. He is tied for second in the league with Edgar Martinez of Seattle in the American League. Oh, his look out into the crowd in a hurry. 0 oh, 2 the count to Palmero. Bonilla is on deck. Now, we mentioned Edgar Martinez. The Seattle Mariners, second place over in the Western Division to Texas, are in Texas tonight. And the Mariners and Rangers have played one inning scorelessly. We'll be trying to keep you abreast as to the goings on out there. An interesting pennant race ball game. The Mariners have won the first three games of that series. And Edgar hit three home runs last night. And Gordon was well, trying to distract him at second base. He was kind of dancing off the bat, so Gordon stepped off the slab. Bologna is really not a big threat to steal a base, especially with the left-handed hitting Palmero up there. They have a real easy shot at throwing him out of third base with a left-handed left-hander at bat. Fastball misses one ball and two strikes. Frank Thomas, 85 RBIs for the White Sox. Palmero, Edgar, 77, and then of course Mo Vaughn. Now tied with Greg Vaughn. In fourth place in the league. One and two to count. And another pop up. Shadow left. Valentin out. Jefferson in. Jefferson dropped the ball. But he's got a chance to get Poloni at third. He got it. Poloni had turned around and was already heading back to second base when Jefferson dropped the ball. And he had to turn back around. And break for third, and they got him, and uh, the Orioles didn't think so. Here comes Davey Johnson out to discuss the play with Joe Brinkman. Well, that's another example of what I was talking about. It just looks like they're they're not running well on the outfield turf, and it's a beautiful outfield. So I don't know exactly what's happening here, but well, I, I saw a couple of balls fall in over the last couple of nights, and now I see Jefferson. Now he calls it. And he should have been there sooner is the point. And he ran Valentin off. Valentin had called the ball. And he calls, runs him off. Now here he comes up with the ball and he fires to third base. Very close play at third base. And the Orioles fans and the Orioles players do not think he was out. Here's Bonilla now. And the reason you saw Davey Johnson go out and talk to Brinkman at second base is because he had rotated so he made the call at third base. Joe Brinkman was over at third base. The third base umpire Cousins was out into left field to make sure of the catch. Bobby Bonilla. He's been hot lately. Two and all the count. Well, he's been hot in a lot of ways. He got thrown out of yesterday's ball game after a call third strike in the first inning. So he has been hot. Brady Anderson at second. There's Palmero at first. Boston ahead 2-0. Bobby Bonilla hitting 286. And it's two and one. Now, the Orioles as a team have been struggling with the bat the last three or four weeks. And Bonilla and Ripken, two of the only hitters who've really been going the other way. Alomar's been slumping. Anderson, Palmero, Sirhoff all seen their averages go down, but Bonilla. Even in the, just the last 10 games, he's been hot, but he's been hot over a much longer period of time after a very slow start. Two and one, two down, two on. Broken back. No one will take it himself. And that is the end. So the Orioles had two men on and nobody out, and the big guns coming up. But Gordon got through it. At the end of one, two nothing, Boston. No matter what your make or model, if your car needs repair, visit Ridgefield Auto Center. With over 35 years experience, Ridgefield Auto Center is your one-stop repair shop. From oil changes to complete exhaust.
From inspection to full tune-up, they handle it all. Air conditioner, brake, or front-end problems are no problem at Richfield Auto Center. Drop off your car in the morning, and they'll have it ready in the evening. And let our professionals set your mind at ease. Welcome to Herbert's Billiards, the exciting gathering spot guaranteed to change your idea of entertainment. With 24 pool tables, a spectacular bar, and a terrific menu served poolside, Herbert's combines private club comfort with sensational sports action. Herbert's is the perfect place to bring a date or to spend an afternoon with the family. Get free pointers from Herbert's staff, enjoy Herbert's game room, or let Herbert's create a different and exciting party for you. Herbert's Billiards, a unique entertainment experience you won't forget. Parkway Toyota, New Jersey's oldest Toyota dealer, serving Bergen County for over 30 years. Our modern state-of-the-art service department will maintain the quality built into your Toyota. And with our exclusive stratified labor pricing, you'll save by paying just for what you need. Parkway's fully stocked parts department offers genuine Toyota parts and accessories. Parkway Toyota, where your satisfaction comes first, before and after you buy or lease your car. Parkway Toyota, because we give you more. Over the years, all kinds of spinoffs have been created. There's been Sports Center, the Saturday morning cartoon. Hi, I'm Keith Olbermann. Hi, I'm Dan Patrick. Welcome to the Big Show. Sports Center, the concept album, and who could forget Sports Center, the movie? Dan, but I. But I'm not like the other sportscasters. You make me feel in fuego. Uh, Billy. Strike to Mike Stanley, and here we go to the second inning. Two nothing, Boston ahead. Stanley, the seventh place hitter, he'll be followed by O'Leary and Tinsley. Two nothing, Boston ahead. And Erickson misses outside. One ball, one strike. A couple of other ball games going tonight in the American League. See now, everybody wants to play Sunday nights. You notice that, gentlemen? <laughs> Kansas City of Minnesota and Seattle of Texas. Was this one? Slider misses. One ball. Where are we in the count now? I'm looking at the scoreboard here. It's two balls and one strike. All right. All we need to do is look right at our own screen there, don't we? <laughs> two and one. High in the end of right field. Bonilla on the run. Makes the catch. So there's one away. Now Bonilla. And hitting that ground ball to Vaughn after breaking his bat, got booed by the crowd here. And I, I'm guessing, Joe, because he didn't run real hard in the play or didn't run at all. Let's take a look at it. Well, we couldn't see what he was doing at the beginning, but. They booed him anyway, and uh, they. The only thing I can think of is that, uh, because he wasn't running hard. Well, unless they were just born because he didn't get the run in, but I, I doubt that because he has been swinging the bat well. Well, and, and you don't hear that in this ballpark. That would be a, that would be a little bit odd in this ballpark. B.J. Sohan throws out O'Leary, and two men are gone now here in the second. Troy O'Leary retired. Two nothing. The Red Sox ahead. And Lee Tinsley is coming up. That's the view from the, the, the big wall in right field. The scoreboard, they sell standing room space out there. And you get a spot to put your drink and rest your elbows and watch the ball game when you're out there. But uh, of course, you just don't have a seat. Why didn't you tell me that yesterday when I was sitting up here in the box by myself? I could have been sitting out there with a, you know, with a Coke or something and, you know, watching the game. Could have been getting some sun. Yeah. Lee Tinsley, the ninth place hitter. Now they traded Tinsley to Philadelphia and got Heathcliff Slocum to replace Rick Aguilera, who became a free agent. And Tinsley got hurt, plus did not hit in Philadelphia. And finally they said, well, we don't even like this guy that much. And now the Red Sox have him back. They got Slocum and they got Tinsley. Well, I think Philadelphia was getting rid of Slocum's salary because he had had a good year, and if he would have, you know, gotten a big raise, they didn't want to be stuck with that. So they wanted to move Slocum, and it just worked out that Tinsley was the guy that they thought they wanted at the time. Tinsley, 27 years old, last year for Boston, hit 284 and stole 19 bases for them. 
think that he couldn't play for Philadelphia, is he? He just did not hit. Cal Ripken can't get to it. It's in there for a base hit. Now let's go to Larry Beal for an update. Larry. Thanks, John. In progress, KC and Minnesota. And what a way to start in the top of the first. Here it comes. There it goes. Scott Aldred serving one up to Kevin Young. And Aldred feels the dread of a three-run homer. Royals jump out to a three-nothing lead. The Twins get one back. It's now a three-one game in the second. Back to John and Joe. Thanks, Larry. Two-nothing here on the Mo Vaughn home run. Boston ahead. Here's leadoff man Jeff Fry. And Fry, grounded out his first time, takes a strike. In that uh, Seattle at Texas ball game, no score after one and a half innings. Top two teams in the American League West going at it. By the way, Peter Pascarelli points out that lest we overlook it, that the Phillies got more than just Tinsley in the slope. Right. They got Ken Ryan, who's been a very effective relief pitcher for them this year. And they also got an outfielder, Glenn Murray, who is now up in the ball club, too. Although he's hurt right now. Sir second and Bill quickly dances out of harm's way there with Tinsley coming in hard on that's the inning one hit one left Sirhoff coming up two nothing Boston oh, shotgun <laughs> ever try to fit your friends in the back seat of the average sports car oh, wow. oh, perfect <laughs> Presenting the Nissan 200SX. With a back seat big enough for two full-sized adults, legs and all. The Nissan 200SX. The sports car for today's world. Vex, the original import. Taste German beer at its finest. Bex, America's favorite German beer. Basketball fans, you can't beat this. Count it. The Chicago Bulls are the best ever. Wow. Enjoy all the record-breaking excitement in this thrill-packed video. The Chicago Bulls 1996 NBA Champions, plus this limited edition SI Commemorative. Both are free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Your free video lets you run with the Bulls as they rewrite the record books with a flourish and style all their own. Plus, this leather-bound, gold-embossed, individually numbered SI Collector's Edition is a championship memento you'll treasure forever. Get this exclusive Bulls Collector's Package free when you order 54 issues of SI for only $1.48 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. Use your credit card. Call now to get the unbeatable Bulls Championship Pack free from SI. A sports experience like no other. Sports Illustrated. Get into it. B.J. Serhoff takes a called strike from uh, Flash Gordon. And here we go into the last of the second inning. Two nothing. The Red Sox out in front. Serhoff, Devereaux, and Hoyles. Coming up for the Orioles. B.J. Serhoff, the former Milwaukee Brewer. Curve balls rolled foul past first base. 0 and 2 the count. Serhoff also hit a home run here yesterday against Clemens. He got 13 home runs, equaling his career record for home runs. In a, uh, a great pickup for the Orioles, 287 average. Well, he had a great season for the Brewers last year, and he was off to a great start here with the Orioles before he got hurt. So, I mean, he's been a very good addition to this ball club. Two strikes. In the air to left field, Jefferson. And there is one away. Now tomorrow is All-Star Monday on ESPN at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The All-Star Gala presented by Network MCI. Then at 8.30, the Gillette Home Run Derby. And at 10.30, the All-Star Celebrity Softball Game presented by Network MCI. That's All-Star Monday on ESPN. Are you going? I think I'll drive up and watch the home run hitting contest and, and the all-star game. I think I will, John. Yeah. Well, they'll probably put you to work then. <laughs> so I'm gonna be up there. There's a call and strike to Devereaux. 
and it's on one. And if I were, you know, if I was NBC, I'd put you to work on the All Star telecast on Tuesday. As long as you're going to drive up there. Well, maybe I'll drive up there and work for everybody. I'll do the home run hitting contest tomorrow, and uh, maybe stay for the game. So maybe you're right. Mike Devereaux, he was with the Atlanta Braves last October, and now back with Baltimore into the upper deck with that foul ball. Owen to the count. He was the most valuable player in one of the games in the championship postseason, the National League Championship Series MVP. He, he is a very good guy to have on a ball club. He's proven to the Orioles. And like he proved to the Atlanta Braves last year. I mean, he's a valuable. I mean, he'll get some big hits for you. He'll do a lot of things on a part-time basis, maybe. Maybe he's not a full-time player anymore, but check swing. They're still thinking that Jeffrey Hammonds is going to be the everyday outfielder that they need here, but until that happens, I guess Devlin is going to be the man. Two down, nobody on it. Chris Hoyles comes up. Boston ahead, two nothing. Hammonds got sent down to the minor leagues, and they haven't been too pleased, as he said he was. He realized he needed to do some work. In fact, right after we saw him in Kansas right. City, he got, he got sent out. Well, it took the full 72 hours to get there, which came as a surprise. They all thought he was going to go there right away from things he had said. And then he went into a terrible slump when he got there. It was 7 for 42. Well, 7 for 42 is that's because he got hot for a while. <laughs> he went down there and was 2 for 28 at the beginning. Terrible. He went 0 for 4 in a ball game today. But they're hoping that uh, he'll get it together down there. Hammond's not much experience. He's been hurt so much. Since he signed a professional contract out of Stanford, former Olympic hero for the United States Olympic baseball team. One and one to Hoyles, hitting 222. 11 home runs and 28 runs batted in. But he has been stuck in the 220 level. Not the, uh, the offense that they saw in a couple of years. He got hit with that pitch. So Hoyles will take first base. With two down here in the second inning, and we've got another update now from Larry Beal. There's action everywhere, John. Network MCI taking us to the ballpark in Arlington, Seattle, and Texas. Mariners started the day three games back, and Warren Newsom with a two run shot off of Bob Wells. Rangers trying to snap a three game losing streak off to a two nothing lead as they head to the third. And you see in the West, the Rangers, who were leading by six when Seattle arrived in town Thursday. Now is down to three. There's a called strike to Bill Ripken. Bill is hitting 272, two homers, nine runs batted in. Two nothing. Red Sox lead, last of the second. Two down, Hoyles at first. Tom Gordon, the pitcher. Just off the outside with that one. One ball, one strike. The pitchers, by the way, in that Seattle, Texas ball game. Wells for the Mariners who just gave up that home run to Newsom and Ken Hill for the Rangers. Wells is nine and one for Seattle. Billy fouls one straight back. One ball one strike. Bill Ripken or whatever I beg your pardon one ball and two strikes to Bill Ripken. Bill the younger brother of Cal younger smaller he said Cal used to beat up on him when they were kids. It was tough being a younger brother to Cal. So when they play games, Cal always wanted to win. A little pop fly. Jeff Fry. And that is the final out. One man left. We head to the third. The big guns coming up. Valentin, then Vaughn and Canseco. Two-nothing Boston. Steve Young here. You know, crispy Wheaties and Raisins has plump raisins, sweet flakes, and an incredible crunch. I love the crunch. Good crunch. Bad aim. Come crunch time, there's only one. Crispy Wheaties and Raisins. Look at that damage. Where'd I go wrong? You should have waterproofed. You improved Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofer has more power for more protection. Long-lasting protection. Don't wait till it's too late. Thompson's is protection. This summer at Burger King, put 
your hands together for Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now in theaters, with some great puppets that your kids will have to get their hands on. Buy any tasty value meal, and we'll hand over one of these cool puppets for just $1.99 each. Quasimodo, Esmeralda, Phoebus, and Hugo. Collect all four. Put your hands together for Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. One of the summer's biggest events is on hand. $1.99 puppets only at Burger King. There's a medical revolution in America, and its lifeblood isn't a miracle drug or shiny new machine. It's somebody to talk to at 3 a.m. It's a nationwide network linking transplant programs and patients. It's helping you get the right monitoring for every prescription, the right test for every problem. It's a new tool for the doctor, new freedom for the patient. The lifeblood of better health care is information, and it's flowing through everything we do. United Healthcare. Baseball's brightest stars meet in Philly for the annual Midsummer Classic celebration. At 7.30, the All-Star Gala. At 8.30, the Gillette Home Run Derby. At 10.30, the All-Star Celebrity Softball Game. Baseball's biggest day, All-Star Monday, tomorrow on ESPN. The ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week is brought to you by the more than 1,350 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And the pitch is a called strike from John Valentin. This is John Miller, along with Joe Morgan, your Sunday night telecasters. Every Sunday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. Just tune us in and you'll find a ball game. Valentin in the center, Brady Anderson. Nice catch. Valentin doubled his first time. But Brady is able to get to that one. Now Mo Vaughn coming up, and his first time up, Mo got a hold of one, to say the least. Well, Eric, the Utah Street. Eric's going to try to get a fastball in, and you can see he let it all go right there. And watch the flight of the ball. Up against the warehouse on the bounce out there. That's, that's a pretty good shot. So here's Mo again. Now he works him away. That was only the ninth ball ever hit out on the Utah Street on the fly. They measured it at 419 feet, but uh, we need to qualify all of that because they, they measure it differently here than in any other ballpark. Bill Ripken. And he got Mo Vaughn. Out number two. Two down, nobody on here in the third inning. 2 nothing. Boston ahead here is Jose Canseco. Canseco pretty much only a designated hitter now. They're thinking that maybe Kevin Mitchell might be back after the All-Star break, but nobody seems to know much about Mitchell's situation. He was on the disabled list. He went out on a rehab assignment. Then it was decided that it'd be better for him to take off some weight before he actually came back to the big leagues. And he apparently is doing that without being in the minor leagues but uh, just done some kind of a, a workout program or whatever so Kevin Mitchell has not played much for the Red Sox suffice it to say in 1996. Well he's had some injuries obviously hamstring injuries but you knew right away that if he did not get in the full spring training that Kevin was going to have some problems and he came late and that's exactly what has happened. Is a foul ball. Two and one to Ken Seiko. But as good as this lineup is, if they had a kept healthy Kevin Mitchell to add to Ken Seiko and Vaughn, I mean, it's be, it would probably be one of the best middle of the lineups ever. I mean, these three guys can really swing the bat, they can drive in runs, and they can drive the ball. They're all good hitters as well, not just sluggers. Well, Vaughn at number 25 tonight. Swing knows his first base up by Tim Welke on the appeal. Three and one now to Canseco. Canseco, three homers in 29 career at bats against Erickson. Nearly half of his total of hits against him. Two down, nobody on. Did he swing? Well, Ken Kaiser made the ruling on that one. Boyles was appealing as Kaiser was calling it a strike. Well, Ken too. Seiko helped him out a lot there. That pitch never started in the strike zone. He had made up his mind he was going to swing before he released the ball. 
And by the way, he called it a, a strike because he ruled that he swung at it. Pitch not in the strike zone. Three and two. Way outside. So Canseco gets his second consecutive walk. Two down. Canseco aboard. And now Tim Nary will come up. Well, the Red Sox uh, got off to such a terrible start this year. They were six and 19 in the first four weeks of the season. Now that's that's a pretty slow start. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real slow start. I mean, sometimes I mean, 13 teams, games under. Yeah, sometimes teams go like two and six, yes. and they say, "Boy, what a slow start!" Now six and 19. That's a slow start. That's a slow month, and they haven't really recovered from it yet. It is still 14 under 500 right now. The defense was terrible. They went with Will Cordero at second, a position he never played, and he was not playing it well. The outfield was uh, not very strong defensively. Mo Vaughn has had his problems over at first base. He made a, a critical error yesterday in a one run loss. They got to win the last day of April to finish 7 to 19. It got it going a little bit better in May, but mostly it had just been mediocre all the way through after a terrible start. Hence the meeting the other day at Yankee Stadium, although the day after the meeting, they didn't play that day in New York, the day after they came here and got thumped, although they made a nice rally in the ninth inning. Earl Weaver used to say he didn't like team meetings because if you had a team meeting and then you still lost, well then what do you do? Strike three calls to Narry on the outside. Down go the Red Sox. One man left. We go to the last of the third. Top of the order. Polonia, then that man, Brady Anderson and Cal Ripken. Two-nothing Boston. There's no track in the world that's tougher on brakes than the one in Martinsville, Virginia. And when drivers take the green flag here, they all have one thing in common, the same brand of brakes. Because without them, you can't come down this straightaway at 120 miles an hour and still make it through the turn. So which brand do the top drivers use to get them through 500 laps at Martinsville? Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. And we stock them at AutoZone. if you weren't here where would the money come from to take care of your family their home their education their future people with life insurance have the answer life insurance it isn't for the people who die it's for the people who live it was like a recurring nightmare i'd stop smoking feel like i was gonna die have a cigarette a couple of cigarettes beat myself up and start all over again this time, I got Nicorette. It helps the way I need it to help, craving by craving, need by need. So, I'm not smoking, and I'm not suffering. Hallelujah. If you want to stop smoking, Nicorette gum can increase your chance of success by helping control your cravings. And now, it's available without a prescription. You can do it. Nicorette can help. They get a hold of this game, then all of a sudden, everybody's kid for Virginia. They get my particle. <laughs> They got my wheels. They even gave away my patented swing. It's a whole new ball game. Ken Griffey Jr.'s winning run with ACM graphics. Only on Super NES. Here you go, Mr. Griffey. Sorry, kid. Car sold separately. Last of the third inning, Luis Polonia leads it off for Baltimore. And then uh, Brady Anderson and Cal Ripken. Polonia, single to center his first time. 2 0, Boston ahead. John Miller and Joe Morgan here with you. And the 1 0 delivery outside for a ball. I, I mentioned earlier, by the way, Joe, because I know you as a Hall of Famer will be welcoming yes. with open arms the arrival of Earl Weaver into the Mount Olympus of baseball, Cooperstown, this summer. Well, he's a very special guy. He was a special manager. I remember years ago, Sparky Anderson told me that he thought he was the best manager in baseball at that time simply because he had lost a lot of players, changed the personality of his ball club, yet he continued to win. And uh, I think Earl Weaver always had that idea of pitching, defense, and the three run homer. <laughs> he said, if I get that, I'll win a lot of ball games. And he got that, and he won a lot of ball games. Always had good pitching here in Baltimore. Two and two, the count to Polonia. 
Two nothing Red Sox on the Mo Vaughn home run in the first. Two runs, three hits for Boston. No runs, two hits for the Orioles. And the outfield over toward the left field side against Polonia. Very high. Three and two the count. Texas still leading Seattle two nothing out in Texas. Last of the third inning in that ball game, we showed you the Warren Newsom home run with the Rangers ahead. Still three balls, two strikes. John, and watching Tom Gordon, he looks completely different than the Gordon that I've watched over the years in Kansas City. That devastating curveball, he does not seem to have that. He seems to be going mostly with fastballs, trying to move the ball in and out, up and down. But he had a devastating curveball when he was in Kansas City. Well, Poloni chased ball four that time. And he kind of walks away shaking his head, knowing that he had himself a walk right there. Shoulder high fastball on that one. Three and two the count. Sammy Ellis told me before the game, the Boston pitching coach, that Gordon has developed a little cut fastball yeah. he's been using. Uh, well, obviously, the overhead curveball is tougher to control than, say, a cut fastball or a little slider. And that will go out of play down the left field line. Three and two. And he's always thrown that curveball. He had a couple of different curveballs. And they've been feeling that he just needs to establish that fastball because it's a good fastball. Tonight he's been throwing a lot of fastballs. And that fastball is driven foul down the left field line. Still three and two. Well again he has a great he has had a great curveball in the past, but his fastball has always been pretty straight. He started for a while trying to turn it over. But he does throw hard, but he doesn't have a lot of movement on it. That is fouled on the left field line. That is 10 pitches now thrown to Polonia. And he's fouled off how many of them? Three that were balls. <laughs> so he's fouled, he's I'm fouled off ball four three times. Yeah, I'm thinking if you're Gordon, you just bounce it and let him swing at it. That is a base hit. Well, he made a mistake. He threw him a strike. <laughs> Polonia is two for two, and the Majors' leading home run hitter comes to the plate now, Brady Anderson. Brady, who made a nice play on John Valentin's liner in the first half of this inning. Good hitting by Valentin, but Brady got a good jump on it, and he comes in, he makes the catch, and then he slides. I think he made the slide more or less to protect his quad muscle. That he, he has an injured quad, right quad, so he slid just to protect it, I think. He really thought that Brady needed maybe a week to 10 days to fully get over the quad muscle injury. And this is six or eight weeks ago. In the back first is Polonia. It's difficult to heal simply because every movement you make, that muscle comes into play when you lift your leg. So anytime he starts to run, he puts pressure on the quad. Nobody out. Polonia at first. That's a fair ball. Down the right field line it goes. Polonia rounding second, heading for third. O'Leary up with the ball. Polonia will be held at third. A double for Brady Anderson. Second and third, nobody out, and Cal Ripken is coming up. If they feel like Tom Gordon has to establish his fastball, he's not going to be the Tom Gordon of old. I mean, if you look at it, that's why he has this high earned run after 6.32. He cannot get you out with a lot of fastballs. Brady Anderson just ripped this ball right over the bag. And remember, it doesn't have to hit in foul ter fair territory once it passes the bag. In fair territory, that ball definitely curved right over the top of the bag and then hit in foul territory. Now, Cal Ripken. Now, in the first inning, the Orioles had runners at first and second with nobody out. Ripken, Palmero, Bonilla came up, but they got all of them. And the Orioles did not score. Now they have runners at second and third with nobody out. And here come the big guns again. Ripken checks his swing. Ball and no strikes. And as Joe mentioned, Cal has not had a hit since he hit the home run against Wakefield in the first inning of the game here Thursday. The infield stays back. That is a fair ball. And Ripken is out. Naring makes a great play. Great play there by Naring. I mean, that is just diving behind the bag, getting up and throwing Ripken out. 
you see he's just a little bit deep behind the back. This ball is ripped down the line. I mean, this is a great play. See, so cuts it off, gets up very quickly, and makes a strong throw to first base to retire Cal Ripken Jr. And so the Red Sox, whose defense has been a problem for much of the year, and the defense comes through for Gordon with a great play. Tim Naring. Now here is Paul Merrill. Runners still at second and third. Now with one out. The infield remains backed up. Ball one to Paul Merrill. Paul Merrill had a little bloop in the shallow left that was dropped by Reggie Jefferson, but then he was still able to recover and throw out Paul Merrill at third on the force out. Paul Merrill is heading back to second base. Now they're going to walk Paul Merrill intentionally. This is interesting, John. Almost a wild pitch. You have a two to nothing lead, and you decide to walk. Palmero, I mean that shows that's showing a lot of respect for Palmero. It's the third inning and they're putting the go-ahead run. Yeah. On base. I, I mean I don't quite understand it, but I guess again they have a lot of respect for Palmero. Well, I guess that's the way it goes. So Palmero gets the intentional walk. The bases are loaded, and here is Bobby Bonilla. Well, I guess he figures with one out, why face if you get Palmero, you still have to get Bonilla out. Well, I agree, but by the same token, we have a two nothing lead already. If, if you're in the bottom of the eighth inning, I say okay, but you're in the third inning and you have a two nothing lead. Now, when you had the bases loaded and a power hitter up, you don't have much room to maneuver. That's the problem. You put Gordon into a very difficult situation simply because, I mean, if he misses with the first pitch, then he basically has to give Bonilla a pitch to hit. And make no mistake about it, you know, you're you're doing this to a veteran. A guy like Bonilla is going to step up here and he's going to really try to make you pay for that. I mean, this is an embarrassing moment as far as Bonilla is concerned. And he's not going to take this lightly. Well, Sammy Ellis has had his chat at the mound. And now Bobby Bonilla will come to the plate. The bases are loaded with Polonia at third base. Anderson, the possible tying run at second base. And Palmero, the possible go-ahead run at first base. The infield double play depth. That is foul. Well, I hung that curveball in there. And by the same token, we we're talking about the fact that, you know, Palmero had been into a, in a slight slump as well. You know, being one for his last 19, so it's not like he's on fire either. Bonilla hitting 285. Third ball, called a strike. Quickly, Gordon is ahead of going two. And that was a, that's probably the best pitch he has thrown this entire ball game. It started toward off the plate outside and it really started to bite and got the outside corner. That one misses outside. One ball and two strikes now. Bobby Bonilla. Base is loaded. And Boston ahead, 2 nothing. And he tries that curve on the outside and misses again. Two and two now. O'Neill seeing Gordon for the first time in his career tonight. Center. Polonia tagging at third. O'Leary in shallow right center with the catch. Polonia heading home. The ball hits the mound. And the run scores, but Brady Anderson just all the while stood on second base. Two to one, Bonilla gets the sacrifice fly. Well, the reason that Anderson did not move up is because he did not tag up. He went halfway in hopes that he might drop the ball. It's a breaking ball that he fools Bonilla with. Bonilla's out in front, so he hits a shallow fly ball to right field. Now, Leary's throw is way off the mark. No one's even there to cut it off, but Brady Anderson had gone down halfway, and that's why he wasn't able to tag up and go over to third. Now, B.J. Sirhoff, well, good point. And he was supposed to do that, to be honest with you. I mean, with one out, you're not actually supposed to tag up on a shallow fly ball if you're at second base. Here is B.J. Surhoff, fly to left his first time. Two out with two on, and it's a ball. Bobby Bonilla, by the way, with his ninth sacrifice fly of the year, and he leads the American League in that category. 
his 52nd RBI of the year. Two to one, Boston. Both runners ready to go in anything. Anderson at second, Palmero at first. And it is three and over the serve. A right handed batter. Mike Devereaux is on deck. There's Anderson at second. And Palmero at first. The Orioles have had a hard time getting these runners home tonight. First and second, nobody out in the first. Second and third, nobody out here. They got one of those home so far. And it's a four pitch walk. And again, the bases are loaded. Kevin Kennedy, you say, John, I played things by the book all year and it hadn't worked out. Maybe I will try something different here, and, and maybe that's why he decided to walk. Um, I mean, I, he has his own reasons, but maybe it's because he has done things properly and it hasn't worked out for him so far this season. Ooh, Boston bullpen looking very relaxed. Base is loaded, and Devereaux takes a strike on the inside. Devereaux has never hit well against Gordon. Three for 20. The Orioles' little shortage of outfielders right now. Devereaux going against all types of pitching. Late on that fastball, 0 and 2. The outfielder on the bench is uh, Mark Smith, who's also a right-handed hitter. Uh, Devereaux quickly behind on the count with the bases loaded. Third inning, 2-1 Boston. And that curveball misses. One ball and two strikes. John, I would hate to think that after Kennedy decided to walk Palmero, and then he walked Serhoff on four pitches, not even coming close to get to Devereaux, I would hate to think that he did that intentionally simply because where do you stop? I mean, you have to stop someplace. You're going to have to pitch to someone. Struck him out. Well, they made short work of Devereaux, and that is the inning. The Orioles get one. Three men left. They've stranded six in three innings. Two to one, Boston after three. Walter Payton puts it on pasta. Payne Stewart, blackened salmon. Dan Marino, wings. So what do you put it on? Yo! Tabasco. Presenting Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. A clear, clean gel that goes on smoothly with no white residue. For powerful all-day protection, Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. So you think you're ready for the pros? Think you're good enough? Fast enough? You kidding? Man enough? Ever had Narstalux? Uh, no. <laughs> Stay in school, kid. McDonald's Arch Deluxe. It's the burger with the grown-up taste. Basketball fans, you can't beat this. The Chicago Bulls are the best at that. Enjoy all the record-breaking excitement in this thrill-packed video. The Chicago Bulls 1996 NBA Champions plus this limited edition SI Commemorative. Both are free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Your free video lets you run with the Bulls as they rewrite the record books with a flourish and style all their own. Plus, this leather-bound, gold-embossed, individually numbered SI Collector's Edition is a championship memento you'll treasure forever. Get this exclusive Bulls Collector's Package free when you order 54 issues of SI for only $1.48 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. Use your credit card. Call now to get the unbeatable Bulls Championship Pack free from SI. A sports experience like no other. Sports Illustrated. Get into it. John Miller, Joe Morgan, and we're joined now by the general manager of the Orioles, Pat Gillick. Welcome, Pat, and we're in the fourth inning of the ball game. Two to one for the Red Sox as Reggie Jefferson comes up against uh, Scott Erickson and takes ball one. Jefferson uh, struck out his first time. And that is a strike. One ball, one strike. Now, Pat, uh, first off, uh, the Orioles at the All-Star break. With a win tonight, they'd be five back of the Yankees. And uh, uh, what about that? Is this uh, a ball club that 
is capable of catching the Yankees. Well, the way we've pitched the last uh, two or three weeks, uh, John, I think we are. Uh, you know, the first part of the season we had a lot of uh, run production, and not very good pitching, and now we've gotten uh, excellent pitching the last three weeks. So if we can maintain uh, our starting pitching and the way our bullpen has uh, has pitched the last little while, I think we got a chance to be there. Well, you're talking about Mike Messina, David Wells, uh, this man, Scott Erickson. And your rookie yesterday, Rocky Coppinger, on his fourth in a row. You know, it's funny. I think since Rocky has come into the starting rotation, uh, he hasn't had that many quality starts, but he's sort of stabilized our rotation. And, and the times he's been out there, as evidenced by his record, we've won. So uh, I think Rocky's played a big part in, uh, in the way the ball club's played the last uh, three weeks. One and two to Jefferson. Well, I've been here for four days now, and I've been reading in the paper about where you're looking for maybe another catcher and another outfielder. These are writers talking. I'm going to ask you. <laughs> We're looking for anything, Joe, that can help the club. Uh, you know, at this time, I think uh, any little bit can help, and uh, you know, be at any position on the field that we can up, up, improve on, and and just get a little bit better. That's what we're trying to do. There's Rocky Coppinger from El Paso, Texas. He faced his boyhood hero, Roger Clemens, yesterday, and and beat him, or as they say down there in Texas, he whooped him. <laughs> Roger said he was very impressed with the uh, the way Rocky carried himself out there. Cal Ripken at short, and Jefferson is out number one. Pat, one of the rumors floating around in New York is that the Yankees signed Strawberry so that the Orioles couldn't get him. Did you have interest in Strawberry? We did have interest in Daryl, and uh, you know I was in we were in New York a week or so ago, and I was speaking to George and uh, Bob Watson, and at that time Bob uh, mentioned that they were looking for power, and George echoed that that uh, they weren't the Bronx Bombers, uh, they needed a little more power in the lineup. So I knew they were looking for somebody that could uh, hit the ball out of the park. Mike Stanley, the hitter. Fly out to right his first time, and he takes ball. Two to one, Boston ahead. We're in the fourth inning. Pat Gillick, the general manager of the Orioles, has joined us here. And uh, so, Pat, are the, are the Orioles likely to, to make some moves here? Well, we'd like to make a move, John. And, uh, you know, we're looking to, to try, as I said to Joe, we're looking to try to improve the club. And I think there's going to be a couple of three deals made in Philadelphia over the All Star break. I think there's some teams that now. You know, are out of the races and, and they're looking ahead to the future. And I think there will be a couple of three deals made during this break. Two and over Stanley. Devereaux. And that is out number two. Two men down. Stanley goes down here in the fourth inning. The batter will be O'Leary. Boston ahead, two to one. The standings in the American League East with Boston uh, having a, a terrible year, but the Orioles. Five and a half back of the Yankees. Yankees have been hot lately, although they lost today. The Yankees have played great baseball. And uh, the one thing that I've mentioned to someone, uh, at least uh, my observation, is the Yankees are playing National League style baseball in the American League. You know, they move runners along, they bunt, they hit and run, they hit behind the runners. And that's the way they play baseball in the National League. And, uh, you know, uh, that, the Yankees have been very successful. And Joe's brought that, I think, that game over from the National League. And uh, they played it well. Erickson throws out O'Leary on the big chop. Three up and three down for Boston. Pat Gillick here with us. 2-1 Boston. We'll be back. Vex, the original import. Taste German beer at its finest. Vex, America's favorite German beer. You're not recycling, you're throwing it all away. It may surprise you that an engine set a world record for power and durability. By traveling over 15,000 consecutive miles at an average speed of 158 miles per hour. Or that a motorsports version won the grueling 24 hours at Daytona and the 12 hours at Sebring. But what's truly surprising where they both came from. The 32-valve dual overhead cam Aurora V8. Aurora by Oldsmobile. Okay, hey, 
Uh, has a gun. Uh, hi. I'm painting my house, right? And I get to, like, that spot, you know, that I can't reach. Any one of those things. I'm looking for one of those, uh, things, like, extension doodad. One of those, uh, stick things. You know, one of those makes the, the windows go, wow. Whip you hoo hoo can't think of the name. Ooh. Do you have that? Do you have one of those? For all your answers this holiday, come to Sipperstein Superstores for 10% off our everyday low prices. Sipperstein, we have every whatchamacallit for your home. Um, do you have any paint remover? <laughs> downtown Baltimore ESPN Sunday Night Baseball John Miller Joe Morgan Red Sox two, the Orioles one the Orioles come to bat down the last of the fourth inning against Tom Gordon Chris Hoyles who was hit by a pitcher's first time leads it off then Bill Ripken and Luis Polonia against Tom Gordon who's been living dangerously here He's stranded six Oriole runners the first three innings Pat Gillick the general manager of the Orioles is here with us and Pat uh, much has been uh, uh, written about the Orioles uh, and it, it sounds as though there's all kinds of turmoil in the clubhouse and uh, uh, the owner comes out says Cal Ripken needs to be more of a leader and this and, and this and that. Uh, I mean what is happening with the Orioles is, is this is there a, a, a lot of turmoil going on around the ball club. No I don't think there is. Uh, I think what uh, what Peter Angelos is speaking of is I think that everybody has to step forward and uh, show some leadership. Uh, you know not only the, the manager and the coaches but the players and, and upper management also I think we all have to pitch in and show leadership because uh, you know we got a, a big task here to overtake the Yankees and uh, we all got to pull together. So I don't think that Peter's uh, really uh, mentioning anyone in particular I think he's just basically wanting us all to pull together and, and show the ty type of get up and go that we need to uh, to get through this thing. But wouldn't it be easier for Ripken to kind of force the issue rather than some of the new players who brought here because he has been here for the longest and he is the guy that most people would look up to if he made the statements or if he wanted to leave that way but he said that he leads by example and he's not really kind of a rah rah take charge guy. I think I think that's true. I don't think that uh, the Cal is sort of a uh, rah rah type individual and I think you know Mr. Angelus mentioned that uh, you know sometimes it's not bad to, to step up and be a, bit, a little bit of a rah rah type of guy and uh, you know show your teammates that uh, you know you care about them. and sometimes uh, the players can get across to the other players something that uh, the manager or coaches or, or myself can't get across to. and that's what's important is uh, is having that type of leadership throughout the clubhouse. Chris Hoyles called out on strikes and there is one away now Bill Ripken will come up two to one Boston ahead in the last of the fourth Bill Ripken popped out the second his first time. And what about the uh, the way the Orioles have played Pat uh, uh, are you satisfied that they're, that they're playing hard. Uh, is, is there, has there been the, the kind of work ethic you'd like to see in the ball club. Yeah I think our players are, are playing hard. Um, I think they're very dedicated and I, and I think they're playing very hard on the field uh, and I think they're very intent. Uh, we've got a veteran type club and uh, we haven't got a lot of speed on this club so at times I think people don't think that they're playing as hard as they should be but they're playing hard. It's just the fact that uh, that we don't have a lot of uh, a lot of jet streams on this ball. Now uh, there's been a lot of talk. Uh, Joe was mentioning this stuff in the papers here since he's been in town about uh, different trade possibilities or, or rumors and one name that's uh, in the paper seems like every day is uh, Benito Santiago of the uh, uh, Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, do you have interest in him. Well as I said to Joe earlier John we, we're trying to upgrade this ball club and uh, you know we think we can get something better somebody better to, at a position that will make us a little bit better than we're going to do it so uh, we're taking a look at everything. You figure the Yankees are going to make making a trade before the trading deadline for a pitcher or, or something to upgrade their club. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean George is not one of those guys that's going to stand pat and, uh, and Bob Watson's the same way. Uh, they've been there before and they know that uh, they need to secure their position so I'm sure they're not going to be sitting on their hands. Neither is Pat Gillick. Well I hope not. <laughs> Polonia grabs out to short. Uh, Pat Gillick, the general manager of the Orioles, many thanks for being with us. Enjoyed it very much and uh, have a good break. All right, Pat Gillick, two to one Boston after four. We'll be back. So it was your brother who referred you to American Express Financial Advisors. Planning is a concept that we pioneered about 20 years ago. 
managing about 130 billion in assets. You got a long time till retirement. I'd take a more aggressive position. And when things change, we'll make some adjustments. We've got two million clients, so you won't be alone here. Whatever you plan to do, American Express helps you do more. I can't believe I'm losing my hair back here. Like father, like son. Yeah, right. Look, if you want to regrow some hair, check this out. Rogaine? Don't you need a prescription? Not anymore. How's it work? Rogaine goes to the root of your hair and for some people gets it to grow. What have you got to lose? Nothing, I guess. Except more hair. That's been easy to use. <laughs> and it's starting to work. See, there's room for growth in every relationship. Rogaine, medically proven to regrow hair. Want to make painting easier? Change your roller to a Wagner cordless power roller. There's less mess, less hassle, and less bending over. Because you control the flow of paint. So you can just keep on rolling. In fact, with the power roller and its accessories, you'll get professional results nearly twice as fast. It even turns cleanup into an easy job. So get a cordless power roller from Wagner and transform every room in your house. It's an engine protection breakthrough. New Lubricator 2001 Super Engine Treatment. In independent lab tests, Lubricator 2001 prevented engine metal wear 30% better than Slick 50 and two times better than DuraLube. Lubricator 2001 contains a revolutionary synthetic friction modifier, XL17, which bonds to critical engine parts to reduce metal wear like no petroleum product. Get the one that beats Slick 50 and DuraLube. Lubricator 2001 Super Engine Treatment. And there's ball one to Lee Tinsley. Leads it off here for Boston in the top of the fifth inning. Two to one. The Red Sox lead the Orioles. Again, our thanks to Pat Gillick, the general manager of the Orioles. It's always difficult when you interview a general manager. You start asking about trades and this and that because uh, there's only so much information that he's going to be able to give you. Well, he definitely can't say, well, we're thinking about trading Chris Halls. We're thinking about trading Cal Ripley. We're thinking about trading people because if they do not make those trades, then those players feel like they're unwanted, unwanted here, and so you know. But that's the job of the general general manager. They all have to tip toe around issues. Well, you know, not to mention publicly, a team that you might be talking trade with gets a little upset that they're reading about the trade in the yeah. papers. David Johnson, it's Pat Dobson on the left side of the screen, the pitching coach. And it's two and two now to Tinsley. He's singled his first time. Leadoff man Jeff Fry will follow against Scott Erickson, a two-run homer. By Mo Vaughn in the first inning, the Red Sox total offense up till now. The Orioles got a run on a sacrifice fly. And Bobby Bonilla in the third. There's Big Mo. 25 big flies this year. Devereaux. One down. Now for an update, let's go to Larry Beal. Thanks, John. Texas and Seattle battling it out in the West in the fourth. Ken Hill on the mound had not given up a hit to this point until John Marzano with a drive that's going, going. It's going off the wall. Rusty Greer whirls, twirls, fires to second. Marzano is out. Score remains 2-0 Rangers in the fifth as we go back to John and Joe. Thanks, Larry. Pretty nice, uh, pretty good uh, uh, tag there by Mark McLemore at second base. I wonder what kind of slide that was. Pretty he went inside. Well, he went in sideways. Well, we've got some smoke from uh, the barbecue out there in uh, Utah Street that has brought a haze to the proceedings. One strike to fry, and two strikes to fry. He has grounded a second and grounded a third into a fourth. So that's the uh, the ribs barbecue pit over there. Boog's barbecue is back behind the scoreboard out there, more toward right center. Very popular. It's brought a haze and a nice aroma. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the smoke. That's the look from the Utah Street corridor. And uh, that smoke is coming right out onto the field of play now. One ball and two strikes. Reach forward. It's slowly to count it short. The off balance throw. Just in time. Nicely done. Well, the one thing that Cal Ripken does is. He charges the ball very quickly on balls that are hit slowly, and he gets rid of the ball. Now, he doesn't depend on his arm. A lot of shortstop will charge this ball, straighten up, and fire. Watch, he gets rid of it from down low. He does not raise up. He just gets rid of the ball quickly, and he gets enough on it to retire Fry. 
Two down, and John Valentin will come up. Valentin takes a strike. He has hit a double just ahead of Vaughn's first inning home run, and he has also lined out the center field. Brady Anderson made a nice catch on the ball. So Valentin is one for two, hitting 289. One of the best hitting shortstops around. Although you know his name, now he pronounces his name Valentin. Right. But the Brewers have a shortstop named Jose Valentin. He's from the Caribbean, Spanish speaking player. He got 57 RBIs this year. And you don't hear much about it because of the Brewers. They don't get a whole lot of publicity. But they score a lot of runs. They were second in the league in runs scored going into this weekend. Although the Yankees kind of quieted their big bats down a little bit over the weekend in Yankee Stadium. Brewers beat the Yanks today though for a slider in the dirt outside. One ball, two strikes. Babe's dream. The babe used to cavort out in what is now shallow right center field. His father owned a tavern in uh, this neighborhood in the old days, and now they pay tribute to Baltimore's own Babe Ruth with a, a statue out there behind the uh, the center field hitters backdrop. It's a foul back into the upper deck out of play. One ball and two strikes. And you could see Valentin cringe there when he swung. He's got problems with his left shoulder and his arm over there and he swung that bat on that particular play and he just kind of grimaced as he swung around. And that's what I was talking about early. He's had a lot of little minor injuries that have kept him from maybe matching the statistics he had last year at this time. Two down, nobody on. Vaughn on deck. Two and two. Well, you know, that, that shoulder actually popped out of the socket two different times this year. He was supposed to have gotten a, an MRI and maybe even an arthrogram during the All-Star break, but he called it off. He says he's going to wait till after the season's over. He doesn't want to know. <laughs> so he's just going to play with the team. That one down the right field line, but foul into the crowd. Two and two. This entire series has been sold out. All four games, 47,000 plus. The Orioles in their home attendance tonight become the first American League team to pass 2 million in their home attendance. Two and two. Into right center field, a base hit. Nice hitting there by Valentin. Anderson Someone almost got past him out there. But he holds Valentin to a single, and Vaughn will get a shot at it. With a man aboard in the fifth. John, you made a good point. This is good hitting here by Valentin, but he's turned himself into a good hitter. This is a tough pitch slider down and away, and he just goes with it and lines it to right field. Watch how he stays back and uses his hands. Good hitting there. Good two strike hitting, especially. All he wants to do is put the ball in play, and he lines it right back through the middle. Now here's Mo Vaughn. He hit that huge two run home back on the Utah Street. Valentin just back at first. Then Mo hit a ground ball to second his most recent time up there. Two to one, Boston ahead, in fifth inning. Kansenko would be next. There goes Valentin. Boyle throw, ripped into the tag. He's out. And the inning is over. Wow. Took the bat right out of the hands of Mo Vaughn. We go to the last of the fifth inning. Brady Anderson, Cal Ripken, and Rafael Palmero. The power coming up for Baltimore. Two to one, Red Sox. X Games, sports from the edge. Now, X Games, music from the edge. 17 slamming hits on one CD. Gravity kills. Take my tears and Shades my apart. Take love. Ministry and Red Hot Chili, Lenny Crab, DC Ball, Seven Mary Three, no more. X Games, music from the edge. Get it in stores now. Basketball fans, you can't beat this. The Chicago Bulls are the best of that. Enjoy all the record-breaking excitement in this thrill-packed video. The Chicago Bulls, 1996 NBA.